We spent so much time focusing in the last year in all the media and everyone's lives and the government on people dying with COVID and uh, so little time spent on uh, people who are dying of many other things. And frankly, they are still dying of other things. We have seen uh, actually uh, deaths from uh, cancer uh, rising. Big concerns from some of the biggest cancer charities, actually, that uh, there are tens and tens of thousands of people who've never actually gone to the doctor uh, about uh, concerns about a lump or blood where there shouldn't be, who haven't gone to, to the doctor than those people who've gone to the doctor and have hadn't had a referral in time. Some people who've gone and got uh, and got a referral to the consultant, but their treatment will take many years uh, to actually be fulfilled. And others who were actually already being treated for cancer during the COVID pandemic, the heart of it, last uh, summer, who had their treatment either cancelled or delayed and have sadly lost their lives. Well, we're going to talk about that right now. Andy Jenkinson is a father of four from Manchester and joins us. Good morning to you, Andy. Morning, Julia. Are you OK? Uh, I am OK. Uh, and I don't know how the hell you are, given what you've had to go through. You're just 33 years old. You've got four children and you had your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wife, Emma, 31 years old. Um, and uh, she died of cancer during the first lockdown, uh, well, as a result of the first lockdown uh, back back in October. Um, and you're now raising your children on your own. And she yeah. died of brain cancer. And she was one of the many whose chemotherapy was stopped during lockdown and you yeah. believe that that is the reason why she lost her life 100 percent. yeah it, it was it was back in march uh 2020 when they turned around and said you know it's probably best off not doing treatment because of the covid there's a big risk and they just stopped the chemotherapy uh and then in may it came back uh with a vengeance and they tried putting her on chemotherapy, but then they said, unfortunately, it's not working anymore and we'll try you on another one. But, but yeah, in, unfortunately, in October, she, she passed away with a bleed on the brain. Uh, I, ju- so, I just can't imagine what you and your, your children are, are, have been going through. The, the argument that there was a risk of COVID was that presumably she's having treatment, she'll be at high risk low immunity and they th- they said that well you you coming into hospital would be dangerous for you so yeah. you're not going to have uh, the treatment even though they knew that the treatment was what was needed to save her life and yeah that i mean you're not a medical but, expert and neither am i but no uh, given that most people who get covid uh, do survive even the most very frail yeah. people in their 90s that's yeah. uh, that's a pretty strange calculation that they made yeah, it's 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 very strange. They've kind of like, I, I don't know. They've they've given her a death sentence. The worst thing about all of this, with in Emma's case, is that her chemotherapy was taken at home via tablets. Mm. So when they did put her back on the chemotherapy, they delivered her tablets to home. So she she never took her chemotherapy in hospital throughout the years that she had it. So. There was no risk to her, but they just stopped no. giving her chemo. Th- oh my god! Yeah, they Bad they time. turn around. I've I've I put a complaint in, and they turn a part of the letter says, unfortunately, it's not documented that we went through the pros and cons of stopping her treatment, and they've apologised for it. I... Oh well, that's okay then. I mean, did you at the time did you query it and say, but she's not going into hospital, or did, did... you trust that they? That, oh, they know that they're doctors; they know best. We, we queried it because she, they turned around and said that she's doing well on a chemotherapy, her cancer shrunk, uh, and we're just going to... They, they used another reason to stop a chemotherapy. They turned around and said, we're just going to see if that little tiny white mark is scar tissue or cancer. Mm-hmm. So they kind of tested, yeah. and unfortunately the test failed. So Right. I, I mean... Ugh. I mean, I mean, losing you, losing your your you know your life partner, losing your wife uh, at any age is terrifying. To lose her at thirty one, yeah. with four young children, yeah, it, uh, devastating. Has it been harder to take with the thought that not everything was done to save her? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been really difficult to the point where we've got an NHS system where you know you don't have to pay for these products and. It should just be there off the shelf straight away. Uh, it's just been difficult to the point where it's like she's been brushed under the carpet yeah. and forgotten about. And it was only two days ago we had a friend in Christie's who who you meet. I'm not too sure if you just meet general people mm. in the hospital. 
unfortunately the same happened to her and she's only 31 32 and she died two days ago as well because it's still uh, happening and it's going to continue yeah. to happen and of course the oh. terrible truth is it's happening to i mean i'm not saying in any way that a life in your 80s or 90s isn't worth saving of no. course not but nevertheless i'm i'm, I'm sorry I, I i do value more a life of a 31 year old mother of four than i do someone in their 90s and even if that person in their 90s was my own parent i would i would say this to their faces that i think I think that we do. We, we should focus on those younger lives. They should focus on any life, really, especially ones that are already potentially dying, but do have a chance to have mm. their life saved at the same time. Do you feel? I mean, clearly devastated, clearly grieving. Do Do you feel angry? Yeah, very angry. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a veteran myself, uh, and I just feel like she was just forgotten about and used as a pawn uh, to kind of make way for COVID patients uh, and just forgotten about and like, oh, she's got cancer. It's, you know, it's done. Just forget about her. We're only That's caring about it. the COVID patients. Nothing else matters. Those are the stats that are on the news every night. So yeah. tell me about her. Tell me what was she, what was she like? Uh, she was fantastic, really. Fantastic mother. A uh, fantastic wife. Uh, she did everything for her kids. All she cared about were the children. Yeah. I, uh, you know, to, to, towards the end of it, you know, her personality changed a lot due to where the cancer was. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she was just a fantastic mother. Fantastic. And how how old are the children now? Uh, twelve, ten, five, and two. Oh goodness! I just. I think as any parent listening right now, you actually feel physically sick at the thought of a child yeah. being without their mum uh, yeah. at, at, at that age. How how are they doing? And do they know the full story? They don't know the full ins and outs of it. They just know mummy had a bad head, and oh. unfortunately, she she passed away. You know, I'll I'll never forget the day where I told my children that she passed away. It's going to haunt me forever. I uh, can't imagine what that conversation could possibly be like. It was just a haunting scream it was it was not nice i you know and i just so, some some days i just don't know what to say to them sometimes but what what what's amazed me about the kids is how resilient they are they, they're young enough to just carry on with life and have fun and yeah. live life to the full and that's what i'm trying to teach them really well Andy, I, I mean, I think everyone listening right now is just sort of taking a deep breath and so, uh, you know, just at that what you and your family have gone through and and what what is a, what's the possibility that you didn't have to go through. I'm I'm, I'm just yeah. heartbroken for you. Well done to you for speaking out. You keep trying to get answers. If you need any help trying to push on that, um, I'm 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 good with my sharp elbows and I can perhaps help you with some contacts. So I'd I'd love to stay in touch if we can uh, uh, after the show and um, I just wish you all the very best and. And just my heart goes out to you. And, and just we've got to start prioritising looking after everybody in this country and, and not just COVID patients. That's the truth, isn't it? Make it worse to the point where my children, you know, have to keep isolating from school oh. and I can't do anything and can't work. And uh, yeah, it does, it does make it worse. I bet it does. Andy Jenkinson, father of four, widower from Manchester. Appreciate you joining us, though. Um, 